Many people tell me when you're leveling or tramming your bed with an electronic tool like this or a piece of paper that you need to heat the bed because the bed will expand, otherwise it's going to throw all your readings off. Well, how much do beds expand? And does it really throw them off that much? Let's find out on today's Film of Friday. This episode is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. Whether you use my electronic leveling tool at the adjustment knob to get the LED to just turn on or use the paper method to get that perfect feel, the question is, does heating the bed affect the readings? Will it change if it's heated or not heated? So let's try this out. I'm going to use an Ender 3 V2 with manual level. I got a dial indicator mounted and I clamp the arm so it can't move. And then I'm going to heat the bed. So I set it to zero. The room temp is 25 degrees C. Now I'm going to go to the control menu, change the temp temperature of the bed. So I'll go to the temperature menu, bed temp, and I'm going to change that to 30. And let this heat up and see what the dial indicator does. At 30 degrees, we're mounted right above the adjuster. We're still at zero. So let's move it up to 40 degrees. So it's at 40, and there it's set to 40, so this will heat up. And when it reached 40 degrees, this is what I saw. Same, zero. So let's try 50 degrees, see if we're getting anything different at 50 degrees. Dial indicator, no change. Finally, I'm going to try 60 degrees. Let's just heat this thing up to 60, see if it's any different, because this is typically what I print, 50 to 60 degrees C. No change. So at the adjustment knob, there's no flex, no change due to temperature. What about the center? Let's check the center. So I got the dial indicator in the middle, 25 degrees C, clamped, 30 degrees C, no change, 35 degrees C, no change. Finally, 40 degrees C, we're seeing a little bit of deflection down, and then 0 0.02 down. So it's like warping down just slightly at 50. 55, it's a little bit higher, and finally at 60, 0 0.04. So not a big difference, but it's definitely moving in the center where it's not supported by anything. So now let's try an Ender 3 Pro, and this has a magnetic bed that you can peel off. So let's see if this is worse. Clamped it just like before. Dial indicator right above the adjuster, 25 degrees C. Start with 30. 30 degrees, no change. Let's see what it does at 40 degrees. No change. Let's try 50 degrees. No change. Run it up to 60 degrees. No change. So where I'm using the paper or my electronic leveler, it's not changing. But again, let's look at the center. 25 degrees C, I'm clamped. This is our starting point. 30 degrees C, I'm already seeing movement in the upward direction. By 35, this thing is warping to 0.03. 40 degrees, 0.04. By 50 degrees, 0.05. This thing is getting worse as the temperature goes up. 0.06 at 55 and 0.07 at 60 degrees C. So this magnetic bed, even though it's being held by a magnet, is not holding the center. It's lifting. Now I want to try one of my original Ender 3s. I added a glass bed to this, but I'm going to take it off for this, and it's got this stuck on like build tack material. I did add an LED so I know when the bed is warming up and not warming up, and this has an old algorithm, which is just the bang-bang method, they call it. Just basically turns the bed on, turns the bed off. It's not PID controlled at all. So I got the dial indicator zeroed out. I got the arm clamp so it doesn't move. 25 degrees is the starting point. Let's heat it up to 30. No change. What about 35? No change. What about 40? Ah, slight change. But actually, this is within the plus or minus error of this gauge. So I want to see bigger than 0.01. 50 degrees C, still nothing. 60 degrees C, I see a little bit of a jump to 0 0.02. So there's slight movement here, but it's really, really small. Now let's see what this does at the center. Normally I have a glass bed on this. 25 degrees C, it's flat. 30 degrees C, it's actually going down a little bit. 35 degrees C, it's still down just a little. Again, that could be the error of the gauge. So this is almost zero. At 40 degrees, no different. 45, up, oh, jump back to zero. 50 degrees C. Now I'm actually seeing a little bit of a rise. 0 0.01, 0 0.02 at 55. 
and 0 0.03 at 60. This is warping, but very little. I'm surprised by this, and I had a glass bet on this because I thought it warped more than this. So based on these results, whether you use the paper method to level your bed or my electronic bed level, at the adjusters, the temperature doesn't affect anything. It doesn't change. So it can be heated or not heated. You're going to get the same results. Now in the center of the bed, clearly, temperature affects it. It can make it warp up or down, and that's going to affect your prints. So if you have a small print and you put it in the center, it could affect that first layer or give you elephant's foot because it lifted it up. But for small prints, print them over the adjustment knob. Then you clearly won't have any problems. For larger prints, that little bit of flex may not matter. I mean, the biggest I saw was 0 0.07 at 60 degrees C. So that's less than a 0.1 layer height. And that first layer gets a little squished anyway, so I really don't think you're going to notice. Now, some beds do flex a lot more. And so that's where I use a glass bed. This one I actually thought would flex more than it does because I put a glass bed on this thing years ago and got better prints. That's why it was there. But overall, I just don't think it matters whether you heat your bed or not when you level it or trim it. Now, if you want to try this out on your printer and see how much it flexes, I do have this print for the Voxelab Aquila and for the V2, Ender 3 V2, and also one for the original Ender and Ender 3 Pro. So you can download that for free, and then I'll put a link to a similar dial indicator like this that fits these things, so you can try it out yourself. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. You can support me on Patreon, and if nothing else, click on that CHEP logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.